start making a little money, right? You get kind of comfortable. Right? then this is where sometimes that that hunger you may lose and if you temporarily lose that that's your edge Hey, what's going on guys? Jeff Koga here and uh, headed to the office a little bit late here. <laughs> hey, let me talk about something called the power of broke all right now this story actually comes in two parts number one is a conversation I have my, well, with my wife this morning and then uh, a couple things I've been thinking about as the title of uh, the book that I'm writing and uh, um, I want to talk about this because I think it's actually perfect timing uh, of this so got into a conversation with my wife about her friend needing a computer and stuff like that and I started laughing and it, it wasn't good and then she's all like why are you laughing you got no empathy on it what's going on and I'm just like no you know and then I was laughing because in my head there was a time when I was so broke right um, I couldn't get a laptop so I took my desktop to Starbucks to work. So imagine this, right? Like, you know how like, people have at Starbucks when they're working or they're studying, right? The 100% of the people always have a laptop, right? And maybe some of the people have like a tablet or something, right? When they're studying or working or whatever the heck that they're doing. And then imagine this kid comes in here and the first thing he does is clunk away and bring in a freaking big old desktop tower and places on, on the thing. And then, you know, and then you're, you're kind of embarrassed because, you know, you're looking like saying, okay, what the hell is everyone gonna think about you? And and then you're looking around and then you know people are giving you weird looks and you think that they're thinking about you maybe okay and then you go back outside and the next thing you do you bring in a freaking big old monitor in there and you place it where the big old tower is and then you're trying to find an actual a uh, plug to plug the damn thing in right and and here's a challenge with desktop computers when you bring it in is um, someone says they let you hook up it well at that time they, they did <laughs> they let me hook it up so i brought in the desktop and the challenge with desktop computers is the electrical plug that you have right is short right so i had an extension cord right so the place where i placed my damn uh, desktop computer in starbucks wasn't near a plug so i had this orange <laughs> extension cord that was in my car and i went around i plugged it in i basically says hey can i get some electricity on it and the people people kind of look weird on it and then they allowed me to plug it in and they have this long extension extension cord the you know the orange one plugging it in and that's where i was doing work right now keep in mind this is during the the time we had the last recession and I'm working in a Starbucks with a desktop computer okay and and I want to talk about this because I'm a firm believer that when you're trying to run a business or when you're broke right it requires so much capacity of creativity that you have to have to get stuff done versus like when you are comfortable and you got money coming in and so my wife and I were having a conversation about this and um, I was telling her that and she just seemed to look on her face she was just like what the heck she kind of laughed and chuckled because uh, I don't think I ever told her this story. Yeah, and then and then to a point where you know um, I was broke, where I actually lived out of this exact car that I'm driving right now. In this is a Mercedes, and I actually lived in here, and I actually had my uh, tr uh, my clothes in the trunk of my car, right? And to take a shower, I would go to a Korean bathhouse, actually, right? And that's where I would like clean and wash and, and stuff like that. And at that time, my mom used to think that I used to just go there for like massages and stuff like that because I didn't want to tell her um, that I was living out of my car. Um, but then luckily enough, this Korean bathhouse allows you to actually sleep, right? So I would work and then when I get home, like at 11 o'clock, I'll take a shower at this Korean bathhouse. And then from there, I would sleep. Now, now the issue, sleeping was cool because they had like a nice little like little tatami floors that was nice to give you blankets and stuff like that. It was cool. They even give you toothbrush right so you don't even have to carry a toothbrush around so it was super cool but the issue there all the time that I had was you would have drunk Korean people okay that was sleeping because you don't get like a room literally it's like a room like a tatami room that you're in there and you're sharing with like other men in there right and you're sleeping and and these people are drunk and you just hear them just like Aah. 
restaurant and I'm just trying to sleep so I can get my rest so I can go to work again you know so um, there was a time when I the first time I did that um, it was cool first night second night I got I got kind of really upset because I couldn't sleep so I remembered like throwing a pillow at one dude's face <laughs> and it kind of worked for a split second and then he started snoring again and then by the time you know day three comes around or day four you get kind of used to it right you just realize hey get the pillow and then put it over your face so that way you don't hear it um, and then you like put it next to you and you're like this and you sleep so again the point of it all this is that you know you get really creative I'm a firm believer that you get a lot more creative I think when you're broke than versus when you actually have money and it goes into kind of like I'll tie this into kind of business and life right where this has happened to me where when you start making a little money right you get kind of comfortable right then this is where sometimes that that hunger you may lose and if you temporarily lose that that's your edge and you start making a lot of bad mistakes right you start investing in things that you shouldn't invest in um, you start putting into stuff that you shouldn't put your money into and uh, versus if you were in a position of being just dead broke right you wouldn't have done that stuff right maybe try to do that campaign when you normally wouldn't do when you when you were broke right and and it's an issue and I tell people all the time that you always have to kind of put yourself in that position like of being in that state of chaos state of broken ask yourself hey man is that broke you would you have done that actual thing when it comes to um, if you're trying to grow a business right so I'll end with this kind of two things because I actually parked in the office here um, is this two thoughts okay um, one is this concept of being power of broke right if you haven't read the book Damon John okay highly recommend for you to pick up his book right if you read it um, it's actually pretty damn good it came out last year I believe he's a guy from Shark Tank the, the brother from Shark Tank right and he's actually the creator of the multinational or or what six billion dollar uh, uh, clothing company called FUBU right so he talks about in the book um, uh, about how when he started his company, he only had like 40 bucks or 50 bucks and he figured out a lot of creative ways to actually market his uh, clothing company. And one of the ways that he actually got a break was, if anyone knows his story, is um, he used influencer marketing. for Okay, so if you have never heard of that, right, you might have heard of uh, people like on Instagram or whatever, or people that have social followings, right, that gets paid to actually promote products, right? I don't know if you have ever heard of that or not um, but it's called influencer marketing that's kind of the hip word in this uh, 2017 year and I've used this in multiple different businesses and I even told clients about how how to use influencers because it's cheap currently right now right where you can pay people you know 50 100 bucks uh, to actually literally take a product and you know snap a picture of it or give a review of it and then just actually get it promoted to their followers and there's a funny story about Lloyd Dietrich I believe one of the Kardashian sisters husband or ex-husband right um, there's a funny article that I saw where someone paid him as an influencer right to actually says hey put this caption uh, in there and he forgot to actually delete that <laughs> instruction of the caption so he has like a picture of him with this actual I think it was like some coconut um, supplement or something like that. he takes a picture right in front of it and he forgot to the deleting the instruction uh, and he says hey paste this at 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. he actually left that in there and it became a big old trending news about influencer marketing right so uh, Damon John um, did that first right um, before it was even known and how did he do that well great um, uh, uh, how did he do that which is um, in the same block where he grew up um, there was a very popular uh, R&B hip-hop artist um, named LL Cool J um, he was a big big star right he was making a transition from being a hip-hop artist to becoming kind of like an R&B uh, artist and because Damon actually was in that same neighborhood he's the story is that he kept on going over to his house and actually say hey dude like yo, come on man like this is the baddest stuff man hey you know what support the movement and finally he wore it in an actual music video and that was kind of his break into stardom and that's how he started you know selling more hats starting more uh, selling more uh, t-shirts and uh, um, in that book power of broke he then goes in and talks about other people um, that went through the exact same thing when it comes to um, uh, building businesses, right? Another one that I remember is uh, what Steve A Aoki, one of the most popular DJs, um, the one that d d d d d, right? That uh, DJ, uh, he talks about how he kept on parlaying his money by doing you know hundred dollar gigs for hundred dollars, and then finally now he's well known all around the actual world, and. Uh, and using the power of broke, as he likes to call it, um, being creative in his way to uh, get into uh, different doors. So I want to leave off with this, right? 
Uh, one of my good friends a couple of years ago sent me a click clip on YouTube. Highly recommend for you to look it up. And if you watch it, you'll, you'll either love it or you either actually hate it. And he actually got this YouTube link uh, from his dad. His name is uh, Rob. And he got this link from his dad and he forwarded it to me and I watched it and I kind of laughed. Um, which is about f money right f you money and um, I'll kind of paraphrase the conversation so so John Goodman I believe is a guy uh, is the act actor on there and and they're in I believe a bar and they're sitting there and he's having a conversation with someone and it goes something like this you get about 2.5 million dollars and after you get 2.5 million dollars you do the right thing you know you put it away, you buy yourself a house, and when you buy yourself a house, get yourself a house that has a you know, 25 year you know, roof that's good, that Japanese economy you know, I think that's what he says. And, and then he says the rest of it, put it away. You know, put it away where you can get three to 5%, and then if you have that, then now you have money. You know, you don't have to listen to nobody. Live off, you got a house that's paid off, you know, pay your taxes on time. And then he goes on and says, but the only thing is just don't drink, all right? Or something like that, and that's the message. And it kind of reminded me how it's so true that once you get to a point where, yeah, when you're broke and you figure out a way to get creative to make money, right? Then once you start making money, uh, like John Goodman said, and I'll end with this, and it all starts with that mentality to get all to that point, I believe, when you say, Right, like literally, let's be real, real here, right? When you actually stop giving a f about what other people think, and then the creativity starts, and then you start not not caring, and uh, from there you find creative solutions to the problems, or in this case, let's call the problems opportunities uh, that you'll have. So if you're at a place where you're looking to start a business, maybe your income's not there where you want to do, right? Think outside the box, not only think outside the box, but create your own box and you magically, magically, you know, you'll figure out ways to be able to solve that problem in a very, very creative way. So that's what I got for y'all on this uh, beautiful Tuesday. I uh, love y'all, whoever been paying attention. Thank you so much. Uh, this is Jeff Kogan. If you're listening to this on the actual uh, uh, podcast, make sure you go to jeffkoga.live and hit the subscribe button. This is all I got. Love y'all. Take care and bye-bye.